I'm going to take you to Uganda to see a fascinating project. It's created by a change maker who was determined to add urban conveniences to his rural neighborhood. It's taken a lot of personal investment and determination, but it looks like it's starting to pay off. What I've always hoped for is that I will be remembered as the guy who invested everything he ever owned to elevate his community. I am a development worker from Uganda, building Africa's first sustainable rural city. My name is Ojok Okello and I am a change maker. About 400 kilometers north of Kampala, a small rural village is undergoing a major transformation. Welcome to Okere City. Let me show you around. Since 2019, Ojo Kokelo has dedicated his life to turning Okere Parish into Okere City Project, a thriving and sustainable rural city. So as a project, we thought of an idea that holistically tries to make rural livelihoods and experiences much better. This space is uh, popularly known as the Okere City Market Square. This is the economic hub of the village. Just past the square, they've opened a local bank, supermarket and health clinic. This is our Kere Community Health Center, where we offer basic medical services to the local communities. On a daily basis, this small health facility offers medical treatment to up to about 25 community members. They're also working to improve literacy and education. Good morning, how are you? Thank you. Okere City Project invests in education of children right from nursery school, primary school, and the future, we also would like to start up a secondary school and a vocational training center and Okere University. Ojok says he decided to take a leap of faith and invest in Okere City after embarking on a journey of self-discovery. You see, in the 1980s, when there was political instability in Uganda. I lost my father and I got disjointed from this community. Ojok and his mother left the village when he was only six months old. Despite this humble beginning, Ojok pursued an education and received an advanced degree from the London School of Economics, but says he always had a longing to return home. When I came home, I found that home was a bush. I found that there was nothing at home and I couldn't fathom living here. I started this project really out of perhaps a very selfish reason, a selfish reason of making myself comfortable. But you see, the fundamental question that then I asked myself was, so if I'm comfortable, what else? What about the ordinary community members within this space. And I actually noticed that together we could build something greater, something much greater than myself. Once Ojok began the project, he was all in. He says he quit his day job, relocated to the parish, and invested nearly all his savings into Okere City. So far, that risk appears to be paying off. Ojok says the community is taking advantage of economic opportunities through a new shave butter business. The shea tree is a natural resource that naturally grows in our community. We started Okere Shea Cooperative Society that successfully launched a product, Okere Shea Butter, into the marketplace in 2020 at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Every year, in the last year particularly, we made a net profit of 5,000 US dollars. The shea butter is made by hand, a tradition passed down through generations. To make shea butter, you start by putting the pot on fire. When the pot is hot, you put in ash. And when the ash is hot, then you add in the shear nuts. After adding the shear nuts, you keep stirring and checking until when they are roasted. That is how we do it. 
From the start of the cooking process to when you get the oil, it takes about four hours. Ojok is now working to expand their business even further. We mounted these traditional beehives just about a week ago, and we've seen some pots already started uh, to be colonized. Bees help share trees to bear more fruits because of their pollinatory effects. So in the coming years, we hope to expand this beekeeping project and have another product on the market, which is okere honey. Poverty is the world's greatest evil. So being able to make sure that the okere city project creates economic opportunities, create multiple jobs in their thousands or millions, develop young entrepreneurs, is ultimately what I desire for the Okara City project. While building a city is hard work, Ojok still manages to find time to let loose. Next, see how the community comes together to celebrate their culture. Decades after leaving this rural village in northern Uganda, Ojok Okello is back and leading the charge to transform the area into a sustainable city. Cities we know are hubs of economic activities and of social amenities. So if these services can be found in Kampala city, why can't we create this kind of services and opportunities in Okere village? He says one of the best ways to engage the youth has been through the Okere Boxing Club. These are young boys in the village who are desirous to become the next boxing and kickboxing champions. The unique story behind all these young people doing the training is that most of them were born and grew up in the internally displaced people's camps. But then what happened at the camps was that they were quite unproductive. But through this boxing club, we are trying our best to make sure that the young boys and girls who are skilled in boxing and kickboxing productively utilize their skills. And perhaps the next world boxing champion will be an Okere community member. They showcase their skills on the weekends when they compete with nearby villages. It's one of the many activities locals take part in during their Saturday market gatherings. Saturdays are usually hectic and busy days at Okere City because we gather community members where they come you know, to have a series of community engagements. We usually start our day by having a functional adult literacy class. This class is particularly important because Otuke district is one of the most illiterate district in Uganda. So we hope that through classes like this, community members are going to learn how to read and write, which will in fact go in to enable them conduct their businesses, enable them to make their households better and elevate their standards of living. After today's lesson, villagers started performing traditional songs and dances. This afternoon we have an Okeme festival. Okeme basically is the thumb piano. It's the cultural heartbeat of this community. While there's a lot of joy and celebration now, Ojok says some people were skeptical of the changes at first. The community members are coming from a position of fear. They are coming from a position of previously being exploited by other development projects. But our existence, our operations in the community are not going anywhere. In fact, we've seen that people who had initially been so adamant and disinterested to participate in our work are the ones who, when they join, become the most active community members. He says the key to success was putting an emphasis on sustainability. We make sure that the services that we are offering to the local people 
are not charity projects or charity services. We make sure that through partnership and through collaboration with the local people, we bring our resources together. Ojoke is proud of how far the project has come and already has plans to expand. We have specifically dedicated 15 acres of land to the future development and plans of the Okere City project. And we hope that within the first five or 10 years, this is just sufficient. But we shall see what the future holds and we shall make the necessary expansions for our sustainable city. As the sun sets and the boxing tournament comes to a close, Ojok hopes others see Okere City as a shining example of what is possible for rural villages. My soul, my spirit would be so excited in a thousand years when the Okere City model is replicated across the African continent. Thanks for watching. If you missed any part of the show or any past episodes, head to our website to get caught up. I'm Marito and I'll be back next week with more change-making stories.